So it turns out the if expression isn't the only conditional type of uh, construct that exists in the Scala language. There's also a match expression. And the match expression kind of has a lot more options to it. Uh, we didn't introduce it earlier because it's somewhat more complex. But there are certain recursive functions that can be nice to write with a match expression. There are some things that can be stated um, in, a, in a better way using match. In fact, there are some things that you really don't want to state with an if. And so it's time to, to look at the match expression. So I've rewritten some of the functions that we wrote previously in a REPL in here, and we will rebuild some of these using match. First, let's introduce what a match looks like. So the general syntax for it is you have some expression, and then we say match, and you note that gets highlighted because match is a keyword in Scala, followed by curly braces. And then inside of these curly braces, we have different cases. So a case for what that expression could be. And these cases are patterns. So I'll call this pattern one, and then a rocket, and then whatever code is supposed to happen for that pattern. Or yeah, either is supposed to happen because we can use match either as an expression or as a statement. So if I'm using it as an expression, this, and this can span multiple lines, it better give me back the value that, that I want for that case. If I'm just using it as a statement, it can have whatever side effects we want there. Case, pattern two, and etc. Okay, we can have as many cases as we want. The way that this is processed is it evaluates the expression and then it compares that expression to each of the patterns. And the first pattern that matches that expression is the one that will be used. So let's use a match and I'm gonna put the match example here inside of comments so that it doesn't uh, kill us when we go running the program. I want to convert factorial to match. So I'll call it fact2. It'll take an integer int. It will give back uh, an int. And now I'm going to match on that value of int. So instead of starting off with my if, I'm going to say in match and there's really only two cases here. Uh, the way we're gonna write this one case, or base case, is going to be one or zero. I'll actually go with zero here. And turns out the factorial of zero is one. Our next case matches anything else. Now it turns out to match anything else, I could put a variable name here, an A or an I, if I use in, it would hide this other in, but it turns out they'd be the same thing. But if I really don't need to give it a name, and I don't care, I just want to match everything for this case, I can use the underscore. Uh, so underscore, you know, as we said before in Scala, kind of means something. So a case of zero does this, a case of something or anything does that. And in that situation, we want to return in times back to of n minus one. Let's try running that. Oh, actually I guess right now I'm only trying to compile it. Let's put in a print line. Print line back to of five. High enough that we know it's doing a little work, low enough that, there we go, 120. Okay, so that was a, a happy function. It turns out that this factorial version with the match, factorial is not a function that I would normally write with a match. And part of the reason for that is if you call it with a negative value, this factorial will you know, immediately return one. This one won't. Um, it will actually, in this case, uh, throw an error uh, because, it's, because it only stops at zero if you go negative then it's gonna take those negative values, it's gonna do this case and start counting down towards the minimum integer value before it would wrap around and the stack will overflow before you get there. What about sum of squares? Well, as you could guess, that's gonna look very similar. 
sum squares two, takes an int, returns an int. Our base case is still one here, uh, but this base case should actually be for the value one. Otherwise, we're gonna take n and we're going to n times n, and we're gonna add it to some squares two of n minus one. And we can run it. Of course, right off the top of my head, it's challenging to know if 55 is the right answer. Uh, but I do believe that we had uh, 30 for the, when we only use value of four. Indeed, okay. So yes, that works as well. Uh, we could write the countdown as well. Uh, it's not hard. We just make it so that the case for zero doesn't do anything. And then, actually let's go ahead and let's write that. Because it is a bit different. Count down to, and I wanna make sure that you can see that it is actually valid to have a case that does nothing in the case, whoops, where we are returning, in the situation where I am giving back a unit, So because this is a unit here, we're really using this as a statement, not as an expression. We don't care what we're getting back. And therefore it is perfectly happy for us to say that for zero, we do absolutely nothing. And then for all other situations, we are going to do two things. And so here I'm also going to put stuff on a different line for readability. I'm gonna print line out the n, and I'm going to call count down two of n minus one. Okay. Count down two of 10 and we can run it to verify that it works. And there we go. So that's kind of the basics of match and we've used it for a few recursive functions. Turns out there are a lot of other options for match that we should discuss as well.